So before we begin, remember when we played the Memory Match game I mentioned there was actually an upgraded version of it? Well, to unlock it, you actually have to have this spell, Toad, leveled up to level 16. And let me tell you, it's a complete bitch to do that. But, regardless, I have it at level 16 now, so well, let's play the Memory Match game, and... According to the music, we're probably going to die if we don't solve this, because holy crap, that's tense, but... Anyway, yes, I certainly didn't save and load multiple times to get this pattern down. Now, you have to do this with no misses whatsoever in order to unlock something very special. Again, time doesn't matter, it's just the misses. And once you do this, you get 40,000 gil and the Masamune. That's right, the Masamune. It is indeed the best sword in the game. So, let's just uh, get over to Dante and see how that is. There it is, and look at that upgrade. 130 attack, more than my current weapon. That is amazing. So let's just test it out on some unsuspecting goblins. So, here we are. Naturally, links can kill these things in one hit. But yeah, look at that difference. He's doing 1500 damage to a single enemy. And of course, he has his other weapon to back it up, so... Uh, He's kind of overkilling these guys by quite a bit. And yeah, that's going to be the weapon I'm using for the rest of the game. There is no reason to remove the Masamune from my hands now. I can just keep this thing for the whole game. So, without further ado, let's move on. Now, last time, unfortunately, your favorite character and mine, King of Finn, passed away. And his last orders were that Gordon take over the Rebellion, despite the fact that Hilda has done so much to take care of it, Gordon just walks up and hey, he can take it over. Minwoo was asked to find the ultimate white magic Ultima, and we were asked to go to Dice and see if we can recruit the Waverns and Dragoons, because apparently they fell under attack by the Empire, so they could make good allies if they survived. The problem is getting to Dice, because it's actually a remote island, and the thing is, this is the only ship, and it's not actually running, so we might have to ask them to do some sort of special uh, favor for us. Oh, hey, a new face in town. Well, how convenient. We do indeed need to go to Diced. How funny you just so happen to be here, just as I need to go there. Yeah, of course it's too convenient, Lynx, which is exactly why this deal is too good. So yeah, why, why would we take? Why would we pass this up? Why would we pass up a free trip to Dice? After all, we have to go there. It was King of Finn's last request, and we have to fulfill it. So yes, that is just so convenient that she happens to have a ship that's going to Dice. And we don't have to pay these guys any more than we already have. So let's just board the ship, kick back, let down all our defenses, and uh, you know what, I might as well just put out my big sack of cash here, because I just got 40,000 gil, so I'm pretty freaking rich. Let's just flaunt it over everyone else. Why are there pirates on board? Lady, why is your security terrible? Wait a second. You were a pirate all along. Gasp, I'm so surprised. Yeah, she thinks we're stupid for fighting them back, but, um... Lady, I just got a weapon of mass destruction, so I wouldn't be fucking with me if I were you. Anyway, yes, these are pirates. They suck. A lot. I'm fairly certain their stats are comparable to goblins. Yes, they're that bad. That... Yeah, they're barely more powerful than goblins, or maybe they're just as powerful as goblins, who knows? Either way, they kinda suck. Unfortunately, they do have some pretty good magic defense, though, so... I guess they have that at the very least, but that's not really impressive. Their physical attack sucks, they die in one hit, just... I, I feel for them. I feel really sorry for them. So sorry that I murdered them with ice by crushing them under a giant chunk of said ice. But apparently they didn't die, they just backed off. I don't know, I'm fairly certain I murdered the hell out of them, but whatever.
and for some reason or another we decide to recruit the lady that just tried to murder us and steal her stuff. But for some reason she complies. I guess it's either this or death, so this is probably the better option. And with that, not only do we get a ship with which to roam the seas, we also get prototype Ferris to join our party. As per usual, her stats are nothing amazing. You're gonna really need to train her up if you want to do anything with her, really. Uh, she is left-handed, I believe. So, uh, when I give her this flame bow, I think I'm actually giving it to the wrong hand. You should probably equip it to her left hand, so it's slightly more powerful. Anyway, let's just equip some stuff real quick, since she doesn't really have that much in terms of equipment. There we go, that looks good. So yes, stats aren't amazing, but she's kind of similar to Gordon in that she can really go either way. I think she's actually technically more, uh, I think she technically leans more towards a uh, physical fighter, really, but whatever, regardless. Anyway, so our next target is that island all the way up to the northeast, did you see it? So basically, we're just going to want to go south from here, so we wrap around to the top, and eventually we should come up near Salamand. It is a bit of a long ride, but it's not too bad. Just make sure to check your map every once in a while so you don't get lost, because see, it's, the seas are wide open, so you're going to want to keep a close eye for anything. Oh, look, Buccaneers! Uh, Layla, your pirates have already been recolored. And these guys really aren't that much better than your standard pirates. I, I don't know why these guys exist. Layla, why did you miss? Oh well, regardless, it doesn't matter if Layla missed because we just murdered that guy with a sword. A really, really powerful sword that we probably shouldn't have by this point, but we do. Whoops. Anyway, yes, let's just continue on. Those guys were hardly even an interruption. And I do... Oh, yep, this is Dice. We've made it to the island, so, uh, there's no real good docking points, can't get that close to Diced Castle, so this is where we're gonna have to lay anchor and move out. But it's not too far out, it's right here. And unfortunately, this place isn't looking to be in a good condition. So it does indeed look like the Empire succeeded in their attack, but, oh shit, this ch kid's gonna tell his mom, well, guess we have to turn back now. Ooh, treasure chest! Well, we might be under threat of a kid telling his mom that we're here, but I had to loot the place. So it does indeed seem like this area was hit pretty badly. But there is a wavering in there. Ooh. Fortunately, it's gonna die soon. That's not good. Oh dear, it does indeed look like we're too late. Everyone died except for a single wavern. And unfortunately, we can't speak to the wavern either because we actually need a special item to do that. I suppose we'll just ask about the dragoons and waverns. Oh dear. So it wasn't even really a full-on attack. Most of the Waverns were poisoned and the Dragoons followed. So it looks like Diced isn't doing too well. You can ask this Wavern about anything, but it has no clue. You, uh... Anything about the Wild Rose? Is that it? No, you don't. Alright, well, apparently we need a pendant to talk to that thing, and well, we're not making any progress in here, so let's just see if there's anything else to loot in this castle before moving out. We can't give up just yet, because that Wavered's still here, and we need to find some way to speak to it. We need a special pendant, but we don't know where any of them are. Obviously, there are none in this castle, otherwise that lady would have picked one up. It would be kind of stupid not to. But, maybe there are other places to check. Like, maybe in one of these chests. Whistle, whistle, whistle. I'm sure maybe she just missed a chest. Stun Tome, Stop Tome, Curse Tome. Well, the Pendant wasn't in any of those chests, but I suppose we should just keep these tomes anyway. I mean, who's even gonna use these now that all the Dragoons are dead? I mean, 
Really, we're, we're pretty much the only ones. These- Oh, look at all this treasure. I wonder if there are pendants in any of these. Well, it doesn't look like it so far, but maybe. No, no that's Cross, that's Mallet, that's Saint Spear, and that's Wing Sword. Uh, uh, I guess not, but we might as well just keep this stuff, I suppose. I mean, I'm sure she'd want us to have this stuff. You know, all the Dragoons would want us to have this stuff. That Dying Wavern would also want us to have this stuff. It can't use it. It's a Wavern. It cannot use items like this. It's, it's got no hands or opposable thumbs. It can't really work them out well. Again, I suppose Waverns do sort of have hands. But whatever. Ooh, jeez, stalactites. These guys are kinda pathetic. They have some good HP. Nothing more. They do lose that weakness to fire that their previous versions had. So... I guess they don't have an elemental weakness. That's pretty much it. That's the one advantage they have, other than a slight status buff. Really not that threatening. Anyway, this is Diced Cavern. Uh, eh, it's a cave dungeon, you know. It's it's nothing amazing. I do like it design-wise. It looks kinda cool. It looks better than Semit Falls, to be honest. And definitely looks better than, say, Bath's Cave. But... Eh, it's, it's just sort of a generic cave, so it's nothing amazing. Nothing too interesting about the design, either. It's it's not too mazy like some of the others have been, but eh. Oh, and uh, here's a yellow soul. These guys are actually weaker than the red souls that we encountered. Well, we only encountered a single red soul because it was technically a boss, but... Yeah, these guys are fairly weak. All they can use is Fire 5, which really isn't that good. They do still have the same advantage in that they can't actually be... Uh, hit by any magic attacks because they absorb all elements, but again, other than that, they can only use a fairly weak fire attack and that's it, so you really don't have to worry about these guys. Even if they do appear in groups like they are now, they're, they still don't match the uh, red soul we fought. They are annoying to fight, however, because of that freaking fire animation. I mean, it's not that long of an animation. But at the same time, it's long enough to sort of prolong the battle. And of course, they use fire all the time, so you just gotta keep seeing it over and over and over again. And over, and over. Really enjoy seeing that, Yellow Soul. Thanks for showing me your single attack that hardly does any damage. Not even Layla is threatened by that attack, and she hardly has any HP whatsoever. Anyway, there are actually two major paths in this cave. One is mostly just a treasure route, the other is actually, uh, story-related. Obviously, we're going to be doing the treasure route first, since, well, we don't really have anything, uh, story... story-based to be doing down here. These are revenants. Uh... They're slightly tougher than your standard, uh, zombie enemies, but I don't think they have any new abilities. They do keep the uh, Drain HP attack that some of the other undead monsters have, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just a, a strength buff and that's it. They don't get any other special abilities, so not too tough to take down. As per usual, fire, healing spells, those will do the trick if you really need it, but physical attacks work well enough, especially if you have the Moss Moon like I do. Now, the treasure route isn't actually too long, and I think we're almost done with this. Uh, yeah, we can't reach those chests. They will taunt us for now, and oh, I wonder what that weird pool of greenish water is. It couldn't possibly be important, right? Well, let's just ignore it for now, and oh, monster in a box for knight's armor. Alright, let's see how much damage we can do to the Animantoises. They still have some decent defense. Well, they have decent defense until Dante hits him with his murder sword, but... Yeah, when he does that, they're dead. So, Animantoises don't seem too bad. Don't have to waste any MP on them with uh, Blizzard, thankfully, since Dante just murders the hell out of them. Isn't that just lovely? And we get a Diamond Shield. I think that's actually fairly good, isn't it? I'll bother equipping things later. For now, let's just grab these last three chests, and... Oh yeah, I already have a Flame Bow, because I got those from the Captains, and Layla already has one equipped. And that's actually it for the treasure route, so let's teleport out of here. So, we have the pendant, which we obtained fairly early on in the dungeon. 
So now we should be able to speak to that Wavern. So that's very nice since, well, we don't really have anything else to do, and I'd rather not just go back to Finn and... or er, not Finn, uh, Altair. Rather not go back there without any sort of information or anything like that, so let's see if this Wavern can help us at least a little bit. That would be the green pool we saw that we didn't get to uh, actually go to on our route. So let's talk to this waiver. Oh dear, looks like the waiver won't last much longer. So let's let's ask it about things. So a man named Rickard actually left. We heard that all the dragoons were killed after the Waverns were poisoned because the Empire basically just raided them and slaughtered them because they didn't have any aid from their dragon buddies. But it seems one actually left. I wonder if the Empire actually got to him. But I suppose we shouldn't worry that much about it. I mean, if he is alive, he should have encountered Mitten, right? They're both after the same thing. The more important thing at the moment is to get this egg, I guess. I mean... Is it? Is there really a point in hatching this thing? I mean, it's gonna hatch and then the Wavern is just going to live life cold and alone and eventually die because it can't reproduce, and unless dragons just reproduce asexually and, you know, lay eggs without inter- I don't need to worry about Wavern reproduction. Who cares? Let's just hatch this Wavern. It's at least the polite thing to do, even if the Wavern will grow up and die because it can't actually mate. Let's not worry about that. Before we begin, I'm just going to use a cottage because... This isn't the toughest dungeon in the game, but at the same time, I am running a little low on MP, and honestly, I'd just rather be safe than sorry, that sort of thing. Plus, cottages aren't really that much of a problem anymore, since I have a pretty good source of income from that, uh memory match minigame. Anyway, now we're actually going to go on the proper route, which also has plenty of treasure, but of course we need to come this way to uh, get to that life spring and hatch this wavern egg so we can, you know, again, grow a wavern that will die alone. So, um, the treasure here isn't amazing. We get mithril equipment and, oh geez, uh, of course, we've seen Hilgiguses before, but they are pretty tough, as we, as you should remember. Actually, that's not too bad. Max is actually one of my least offensive characters, since he's mostly got items that give him uh, physical strength. So, yeah, that he's he's not doing that much damage, and that's kind of actually weird because it hasn't been that long since the Dreadnought. I mean, that was the last dungeon we went to, and he was really tough there, but. Anyway, I suppose we shouldn't worry about it. Let's just grab that armor and move on. Because we've got more stuff to grab. Now, we could go that way, that's actually a proper route, but there's still treasure in this room, like over here. We could get this Mithril Helm, and as I was saying, Mithril equipment not really too good, unless you didn't get anything for uh, Layla, because it's slightly better than her starting equipment, but that's... Damn, I went the wrong way. Uh, but that's pretty much it. It's... It's not really that good by this point. It's still the best armor you can buy at the moment, but not much more than that. Oh, hey, green souls. These guys aren't threatening at all because all they do is heal you. Yes, they heal you. Not themselves, you. So let's repay their kindness by murdering the hell out of them. See, even though we just murdered his buddy, he's still healing us. He wants us to live. And we just cut him down. That's how we repay the kindness of others. We just murder the hell out of them. We didn't even get that much money out of it. Really, now. Ugh, ungrateful bastards don't even get, give us that money upon dying. I can't believe the nerve of those green souls. Oh well, I suppose we shouldn't worry about it. Let's just continue on. Anyway, yeah, now we're at the other side of this bridge. Almost at the end of the dungeon, I believe, because if you remember correctly... The uh, life spring was on the 5th or 6th floor, so we're, we should be coming up on it. Uh, okay, it should be 5, because I think this is the last normal floor. Or wait, no, it might be... Yeah, it's actually floor 6, now I remember. But luckily it's not too far away, because all we have to do is go through that door, but before we can get to the spring, there's actually a chimera blocking our path. 
Now, this battle is pretty much just with uh, standard enemies. There, there are many bosses for now, but they'll be uh, standard names, enemies later. You can actually fight a group of four of them, or you could fight just a single Chimera. They're not too bad. They actually have some pretty decent stats, and, and Blaze can be fairly powerful. Apparently it wasn't here, but yeah, they're still decent enough enemies. Uh, but, since they're not too complex, uh, I can actually mention something else that I haven't actually had the chance to uh, bring up up till now. Uh, and that's the boss music. The standard boss music in this game is really, really weak. Like, in comparison to other Final Fantasy games especially, I mean, it's not really that exciting, it's not really intimidating, it's honestly just kind of bland. I mean, it's not the worst song in the world, but mm, there's just... I can't really describe it, it's... Just... Yeah, there's nothing impressive about it, honestly. So that's kind of a disappointment. Music in this game, not really the best. Which is a shame, because the first game had some decent music. I mean, later games definitely have some better music, but yeah, this is definitely one of the weaker soundtracks in the series. But anyway, the Chimera's dead, so we can just uh, throw this egg in here, and, well, that'll, that'll be that. Not to the rest of the party for some reason, just toss that in there. I don't think that was sinking gently, it just sort of sank immediately. Just went down like a rock. But anyway, that's, that's the egg in the life spring, and that's all we had to do, so let's leave. Fulfilled our duty, and I guess that's the best we can do. Let's go back and tell that Wavern we've succeeded, but of course first I should heal because Lynx is almost dead. Teleport drains the life out of you because it's dumb like that. But let's not worry about that, let's just move on. Oh, can't enter the uh, castle from the back. Alright, so... Uh, we put it. We put an egg in some water. We did it, you guys. We we fulfilled our. We did it. Uh, oh, the wavering died. I probably should have shouldn't have spent the night. Uh, lady, do you know how newborn dragons work? They're kind of tiny. It really won't be useful. Oh well. Hopefully the war doesn't go on long enough that the Wavern will just be fully grown by that point, because that's probably going to be a long, long time, and we want to end that as soon as possible. But unfortunately, that's not going to come as soon, because, well, we didn't really succeed here. The Dragoons are dead, the Waverns are dead, and it's really not a good day.